right, everybody. I want to thank y'all for tuning in to One Objectives Night. Guys, we have got a really good show lined up for you guys tonight. Uh, it's t- kind of a turn of events, really. Uh, I was going to have Dwayne Wiley and them come on and talk about um, the Bass, Bass Nation Kayak Series. And I know he was having, having some family issues. Oh, not say family issues, just illnesses and stuff like that going on. And, and you know, I, I didn't want to bug him with it. So I was just going to come on and talk about it. So... Dwayne messaged me, say, hey, man, I can come on. We can talk about this. So I got Dwayne Wally. He's going to kind of, he's from Tourney X. He's going to come on and talk about the uh, Bass Nation Kayak Series tournament series, um, talk about their schedule for this year. Uh, and then we're also going to be talking about the KBF tournament series and the Hobie tournament series. So I want to get everybody's take on what you guys think about it, you know, and, and what do you think about this year's scheduling and, um, I know it's kind of a crazy time, and we just had the ba- – I don't know if you've seen this or not, Chris. We just had the Bassmasters, Bassmaster Classic event move to June. So they, that was supposed to happen in March. They just moved that to June. So that's uh, kind of – it's kind of crazy because that's that's when the, the, you know, the Bassmaster Classic for the Kayak Series is going to start. So yeah. um, we're going to be we're gonna be talking a little bit about that. Um, but first off – Guys, I want to if y'all ha- if y'all have any issues with sound or whatever, we were, we were working through some little issues before the show. It, uh, Microsoft did a update and it kind of screwed up some of our settings. So if you, if you notice anything different or you want anything louder or quieter or whatever, just let us know and Chris will do his best to to make the changes as he can. So, um, but um, I want to thank all of our sponsors that's really helped us out uh, through 2020. 2020 was a crazy year for everyone. 2021 is. I don't even know how to start off saying what 2020 is going to be because it's so it's we're here at the beginning of it. So you know, I mean, it doesn't look good for some of us, but you know, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to speak too soon and turn this thing and jinx us all. So uh, I hope everybody's having a great year. I hope everybody's had a, a, a good holiday season with their friends and family. Uh, it was really really important this year. I know a lot of people were struggling. I know a lot of people had some tough times and. Being around your family is is key when it, when you go through some of them dark days like that, you know. And it helps helps bring light to your life and 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 gives you joy. And I, I just hope everybody was able to spend time with their family and and kind of I guess recharge your batteries and, and get going. So, but also I want to thank all sponsors though. Like I was saying, uh, Native Kayaks, Bonafide, Bino Power, which we're gonna be talking a lot about that tonight. Uh, Yak Attack, Falcon Rods, Missile Baits. Uh, Art and RBT custom baits. Um, Ron has done a lot. I actually didn't get with Ron on for tonight's show uh, to do a giveaway. That was kind of my fault. Just was trying to get everything else scheduled and planned, and uh, didn't get with Ron on for tonight's giveaway. So I'm sorry, guys. Um, watch watch your views drop. <laughs> 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 uh, but anyways, I'm sorry. And uh, like I say, next show we're gonna be doing another giveaway. Um, with some products so uh, i do want to thank everybody that that helped with the christmas giveaway and that, that joined us on that those have not shipped and i'm gonna tell you why because of everything going on with the postal service so um but they will be shipping we're going to start shipping everything out tomorrow um we were just kind of holding back and trying to get through the holiday season for everything starts shipping because the u.s postal service has been kind of crazy and ups crazy with uh shipment so Anyways, we're just uh, we was holding off. We didn't want to get packages. We didn't want packages getting lost. It was just it's kind of a crazy time. So, um, but like I say, we're going to be going over the KBF, the Hobie, and the Bass Nation Kayak Series tournaments. So, for me, and, I, and like I say, I don't want to get too involved with it until after we talk to Dwayne and 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 go from there and see what all he has to say, but. I think they all did a pretty decent job on getting the scheduling out to what, you know, they don't know what we're going to face this year with this COVID stuff. So I think they did a pretty good job on it, but there's just a couple of little concerns I had with, with, with a couple of things with bass side, but we're going to talk to Dwayne about it and, and go from there. Um, the reason why I wanted to go over uh, batteries tonight was because I've been on forums and I've been seeing like a lot of guys talking about, uh, hey, w- what battery should I get uh, for this motor? You know, and I, I see some people that that give some great information on it, and then I see some people say, "Hey, I've been running this uh, for this year, and it works great for me." But you know, and I'm like, man, it might work great right now, but 
you're not going to get the life out of it that you should longevity wise especially when it comes to lithiums lead acid's a little different but when it comes to lithium you're going to have some issues and it's expensive issues so i want to make sure that people kind of think about some things before they purchase a battery because we've had a, we've had a lot of phone calls a lot of emails uh over the last several weeks about you know bino and or just you know lithium questions in general whether they're ordering from us or dakota or amp or whoever they're ordering through uh there's so many good options out there uh, I'm not going to say one's better over the other because, to be quite frankly, I have not been able to test all of them, so I can't say which one's better and, and all that, but I, I just go by what I know with the company that we deal with. So, um, whew, sorry, I'm out of breath today. I don't know what in the world's going on. Wow. I promise I ain't got COVID. Chris, you didn't have COVID. Your test come back negative, right? Yeah. So we're all good. Uh, he had he had a little bit of a scare, uh, was it last week or the week before or something like that? Well, kind of like after Christmas or whatever. Yeah, right after Christmas. So um, he had a little bit of scare to there, but it was all good. Um, hope everybody else, like say, staying safe out there and, 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 you know, doing their best and doing their part, trying not to spread this thing the best we can. I know it's crazy. So I think that's on Facebook. I can't turn it off. What's that? They're complaining about the uh, noise it makes when someone shares a stream. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that, guys. I don't know why it's doing it. It didn't do that last time, did it? No. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Something new, I guess. Yeah. I turned it off on Streamlabs, but it, it's still doing it. So. Oh, I got you. All right. Well, like I say, we're going to do our best to make some changes and uh, and see what we can do and get all that going on. But, guys, uh, amongst yourselves, you know, when we're talking to Dwayne and, uh, you know, chit-chatting in there, um, especially when we get some of these other topics. Think, but think about some other topics you guys would like to cover a little bit tonight that I might not cover um, especially if you got questions for the scheduling. Now, I can't guarantee you I can answer all of them or answer all of them correctly, um, but I'm going to do my best. But especially with the bass stuff, we'll have Dwayne on, and we can we can talk about, you know, ask any questions you have for Dwayne uh, on that. So, But Dwayne Nim's done a really great job with Tourney X, with um, Bassmasters. I know that they've done it with several other events with the KBF. I know KBF is going to a different format this year with uh, Fishing Chaos, I think is what it's called. Never used it. I know a lot of saltwater guys. I think that's where it kind of originated from with saltwater tournaments and stuff like that. But never used it. Can't say that I like it, don't like it. Uh, I would like to see if any of you guys use it, just kind of see what your thoughts are on it. But I don't even have it downloaded on my phone. So, um, But... But like I said, we're going to have him on here very shortly. Chris, what time do we got? 8.09. 8.09. Let's go ahead and call Dwayne. Is everything else all right, uh, Chris? Yeah, so far. Is so. running? Okay, yeah. good, good. Yeah, let's yeah, go ahead and see. call Dwayne. We'll get that awesome Skype music. Yeah, let's see here. Get him up here. And then, uh, like I said, we'll get his his thoughts on the scheduling and, and all that. So. There he is. Hey, Dwayne, what's going on, buddy? Hey, man, let me switch cameras here. Hold All on right. a second. Oh, go ahead, man. Chris is going to get y'all built up here anyway, so. Hmm. All right. I really appreciate you taking the time, man, get in touch with me today to come on. You want to hear me here? Yeah, yeah, I got you. You got us? Trying to get my camera set to oh. <laughs> Yeah, just give me a second. No, take your time, man. Aggravate. I got one arm, bro. I got one arm that works and one arm doesn't work. Oh man. Are you trying to you do no, that? I'm dealing, <laughs> I'm dealing with my uh you got me on live or we just kinda hanging out. We we lie. We on? lie. All right, good, good. Yeah. No, I'm dealing with uh, as mo most of you know, I had a couple of uh, surgeries done. I um I, I don't know why I did this. I wanted to get them all knocked out by the end of the end of last year and I had a um uh, a hernia repair done back in november mid-november and uh that didn't go out as as, as easy as I, I hoped for and then uh had a uh, rotator cuff bicep tendinesis a couple of different things done in my my right shoulder and uh been struggling with that and then uh found out a couple of weeks ago or about well, i found out this past week i had a couple of uh, blood clots so i'm dealing with those so oh man uh, a lot a lot of people have been throwing out some prayers and sure appreciate it and uh, we're going to get through this so uh yeah, I see. And on top of that, go ahead. To deal with BA, on top of that, trying to trying to get these schedules out with uh, a BASS and 
and um, keep Tourney X from rolling and all that stuff. So it's been a, it's been a uh, it's been a chore. Yeah, and I can imagine because you're a man of many hats. I mean, you worked a full time job too, and um, which I know you've been out with your surgery stuff, but that doesn't help really because that it's still hard to get around and do things. So, um, but I know, I know you're a man of many hats, and, and you do everything you can to to keep things rolling and, and going smoothly. So we do appreciate all that you do, Dwayne. Um, man, yes, many prayers have been going out for you. I, that's why I didn't want to contact you because I seen everything going on. I was like, man, I hate to ask this guy to come on tonight. I don't know. He might, he might, man, are you crazy? <laughs> so. Oh man, that's cool. It's all good. Uh, yeah, I wanted to be on to discuss, you know, just discuss a few things and, uh, you know, answer some questions if I could. And, uh, me and this camera here is just not getting along today. <laughs> No, you're fine. I understand. We we're fighting with struggles. We had some struggles of our own trying to even get the show going today. I don't Windows did an update or something and it really messed up some stuff for us. So um but huh. well let's kind of talk about the schedule, man. I mean, I know y- y'all don't have one in California this year. Y'all don't have nothing on the west side. Um and and let me ask you this, it because I could have read it wrong. I don't know. Are y'all not doing a points thing with the bass this year or is it just going to take? We've some- never. I mean, we've never done a points thing with the yeah. bass. Uh, if we ever did, it would be something new. It's not going to happen this year. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be straight. Uh, you know, straight pay cash straight out, just like it did this past year. Um, I want to go back and let me start something. Start. Let me go back a, a couple of uh, just a little bit on this whole bass thing. I want everyone to know that Tourney X is Tourney X. We are here to facilitate their tournaments. That is my job. My my focus. Okay. Mm-hmm. We facilitate their tournaments which means uh we we offer the tournament directors to be on site and we take care of all the judging and the coordination and all that that is my main focus want want to make sure that's clear we don't do the scheduling we don't we don't go out and uh i mean now we we do talk to some lakes and we talk about lakes we talk about where they're going to be at where they could be at possibilities but we don't do that yeah uh that is strictly bass so uh, with that being said, the um, the delay we had this year was because everything got pushed. BASS got pushed. The, the whole Elite Series got pushed. Everything got pushed back into the year. Um, that was just a uh, it was a time crunch mm-hmm. getting everything done. Um, but you you know I, I will I will say this. I'll, I'll give a kudos uh, an applaud. Uh, John Stewart for doing all he did um, after all the, you know, the stuff that he's run all over this country, taking care of, you know, all the Bass Nation stuff and the elites and the, the tournaments and all this stuff. He's still working on the kayak series. Uh, I, I hear all this negativity about how Bass is putting the kayak to the back burner. Well, Bass did not put us to the back burner. Um, there's just a lot going on. Yeah. You know, Bass, Bass has... They, they have their elites. They have their, their nation. They have their, um, whoops. I think we still got you, Chris. We still good? Okay. Yeah, I just heard a feedback somewhere. Oh. <laughs> um, anyway, but they've got, you know, they've got the, they've got the uh, college. They've got all the, uh, the other, I got to turn off a, there's a mic somewhere. Oh, you're fine. Hang on a second, guys. Go ahead, bud. Go ahead and do what you need to do. There. I had to turn off this mic. It was feeding back or something. Oh, I got you. So uh, with, with all that they've got going on, it just took time to, 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 to happen. And yeah. I think we've got a really good schedule. Um, uh, we're spread out. We are doing on the East Coast. Um, we're, we're not going out west this year, and I think that it just needs to have a little change, change of venue. Uh, possibly next year we'll go back out west. I don't know. It's yeah. not my call. It's their call. Yeah. So, well, that's good that you cleared that up because that way too, you know, um, you ain't hearing crap from everybody. You know what I mean? Because they know your name's with it, with the Tourney X side and, and and pushing it. But like, say there's there's a bigger, the bigger people above you is the one that set the schedule, and you have nothing to do with that. So that's good, and that also helps too with you know people asking questions tonight. That you know we can say, hey, look, he, he's not he's not part of that. So, um, but. Right. but- but they got to understand now. They're not just saying, "Oh, let's have a tournament here." I mean, these look these directors, be it AJ, uh, you know, AJ with Hobie, or be it you know, uh, uh, or Chad with KBF, or anyone like that. 
these guys just can't go out and put a finger on a, on a map and say, Hey, we're going to have a tournament here. Yeah. Or we're going to have a tournament there. They can't do that. It's, it's, uh, they're having to work that all in with the chamber of commerce. They're trying to, you know, do, uh, uh, you know, they got these people about putting people in beds. They want, you know, heads in bed. That's the main thing. And, uh, it's, it's all about finding a good lake, finding a uh, good chamber of commerce to work with. So it's not just uh, flipping a coin and saying, hey, we're going to have a tournament here. We're going to turn it there. Um, so and the other thing that BASS has done this year is they're working on multi deal uh, years. OK, so over the next couple of years, uh, they're already planned out to have uh, us or them going back to other locations again for the next couple of years. So. Mm-hmm. That being said, the schedule will come out probably sooner for the next couple of years. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's well, like I say, it was so new. You know, I mean, they started last year at the Bassmasters Classic. It was the very first event, and then pushing everything out, and then you know we run into COVID, and that just really threw everything curveball. And then like bass this year, I mean, could you imagine the work it took just to push the Bassmasters Classic back? I mean, that's that's a feat in itself because, I mean, it yeah. takes so much to set it up. And then you, you're also running the college out of it. You're running the high school out of it. And now you're running the kayak division out of it for that whole championship weekend. There's a lot that goes in just to setting that up and then have to move it all back, you know? I mean, it just right. doesn't happen that easy. So they were more well, worried about getting to, that. I got pushed. To, right. I got pushed the schedule the night before that happened, and I looked at the schedule that we had laid out, and I was like, I saw something in June and I was like, how's that going to happen? And I went, Oh my gosh. And so, so I found out the day before that that was all happening. And I was just sitting there waiting for that next day to happen, which was just a few days ago, whenever it dropped and, uh, just waiting for the repercussions, but it is what it is. Uh, that's, that's, you know, they're doing what's in the best interest of BSS and the people and COVID and, and everything. So that, you know, uh, yes, it was a undertaking, and they—they they, that's what they had to do. So, yeah, yeah, and I mean, just with what you guys do in the judging and 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 all that, I mean, because it's it, they had a big turnout last year. Every event had a good turnout, and it's right. a lot of fish being submitted. Especially, you know, like I fished Chickamauga. Me and James went down to fish Lake Chickamauga, and, and Jason Hensley and all the guys, you know, from the one objective side of things, and went down there and fished that, and, and I was really impressed how everything was done. You know, I mean, it was. To be during, like, say, the COVID stuff, you can't be in person and do a whole lot of stuff, and they had to drive through where they check your boards. I like that. I think that is the biggest key to preventing cheating, you know, is they check your board, and they certify it, and they give you a sticker. And I love that. I think that's I think right. that's perfect. And they did a really great job with that. And, I mean, it ain't like you even had to wait in a long line. You know, they had certain time time frames for uh how how your name was in alphabetical you know and um it, it was just it was a great event and you guys did a good job hosting it and um like say i, I, well, I have to give you know i have to give kudos kudos to my to the tournament directors that we that we've been working with steve steve owens by far um talk about man of many hats that guy is uh unbelievable yeah um he is he's done an excellent excellent job um he just had so many things going on this year. He, he opted to, you know, he's still there though. When I call him, he's, he's always at the end of the phone. If I need help or, you know, got questions or what have you. So he's always there. He's willing to answer questions because he's, you know, he's facilitating the, uh, the Tennessee Bass Nation, the kayak series up there. And so he's just got a lot on him and, and, uh, you know, with, uh, Tyler and Patrick and Juan, uh, those guys. And we're going to bring a couple, three more on this year. Uh, once I get those, um, set up for the new areas, uh, working on, uh, you follow Pickwick and upper Chesapeake. When I get those on board, I'll let you guys know, but, uh, Tyler still, Tyler Cole will still be our director for the upper Mississippi river. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, Patrick Malone will still be over at uh, Lake Fork and also for the championship as well. So we'll see him over there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good. I, like I said, you got some really great guys. The, the tournament director is some really great guys. Uh, Tyler Cole, he ended up – we had him on a show not too long ago. He whipped her tail at Chickamauga. And, uh, but it was good to see it. You know, I, I like seeing good guys win, you know. I mean, most time in the kayak series anyways, most of them are all good guys anyways. But, you know, it, it's always ones you just really pull for, you know. And, and, and to see him win, it, it was a good event. Now, 
kind of getting into the schedule. I got the schedule pulled up here. And like I say, I know you're not part of, of doing it and all that. But so the March 13th at Lake Fork, that was kind of the time when the Bassmasters Classic was going to be. So are they still, they're still going to do that event. It's just not going to be the Bassmasters Classic, right? No, the, 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 the well, they, oh, that's right. They the changed classic, the lake. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's right. The classic and the championship or the, the, the Bassmaster Classic for the elites will be moved into that June spot. And also the, they call us, our, they call the kayak series, not a not a classic. It's called a championship. Yeah. That will also be moved to the June. Uh, it'll be in core in, you know, in, uh, uh, it'll be working with the same date and timeline as the classic. So, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, I believe it is before the classic. And then Friday we'll have our, uh, our crowning of the, the, the champion of the yeah. classic or the championship. Gotcha. Kai. Yeah, because that's what threw me off. That's right. Because I remember they, it was a different lake. It wasn't Lake Fork. And that's what threw me off for a second. I was like, man, but the dates are around the same time, you know? So that's what that's what got me. But I think that's going to be a good event. Me and James was looking at fishing this next year or this year, and I'm not sure yet how we're going to do it, which ones we're going to fish. I, I know um, the lacrosse one is my bucket list one, and that is September 25th. I'm really looking forward to that um and possibly the lake you follow one but i mean they picked some really great uh fisheries you know i mean upper chesapeake bay man i mean that's a that's a good fishery it can be tough if you don't know it real well you know and and but it's some big fish that's brought out of there so i mean and i i think they have the boundaries set already up there from the holtwood dam i think it's called holtwood i'd have to go back i don't have the map in front of me but uh it's several several miles up up the uh, susquehanna that, yeah. Uh, so it gives you it gives you some river fishery part of it, and it also gives you that uh, the, the Chesapeake Bay area. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll be that'll be a good good for everybody and how they like to fish and and, and all that. So let me ask you this, and, and this is you know like say, I know you you have no you have no um, no dealings with the schedule and all, but I wonder why they didn't go with a a few more events for the year and stretch it out a little, you know, I mean, I know it's March all the way to September, but I wonder why they didn't stretch it out a little bit more and, and hit one or two out West or is it just, just, well, you know, as you know, last year we only had five events. Yes. Total. Yes. Yeah. That was counting the, the the championship or the, the, uh, the opener, the classic. Yep. Uh, this year we're having six. Yeah. So, so they stretched it did, out. We did bit. add one more. They did add one more. Yeah. Um, Quite possibly, we'll have one more next year. I, I don't know. Don't know what their, don't know what their dealings are. But uh, you know, we did add one more this year than we had last year. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I seen that, and I, I, I was just wondering, you know, because you get some of these events, they got eight or nine events, or you know, you know what I mean. That's why I was just wondering, you know, like because right. I think if right. they did that, and then you could get into like a points thing, and and I hope that that's what they move into here soon, you know, and have like a points thing. I think it'd be, I think it'd be great for it, and. Just well, I I think the cool part is also is having these states the 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 Bass Nation kayak series in the states the the yeah. you know, the, the, the 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 state levels yes uh, being able to have those guys where they can uh, qualify uh, with their state levels and the percentages of those guys can come to the to the championship as well I think that's a you know guys that can't make these opens or these regionals national regionals what they call them uh, the ones that can't make these. Uh, they still have an opportunity, or even if they did make them and didn't make it, they still have an opportunity within their state. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, they're staying true yeah. to the Bass Nation. You know what I mean? Like how, how that was with the Federation and all that. You you had your chances to go. I mean, it was a harder route to qualify for the Bassmasters Classic through the Federation, but the guys at the lower level, the weekend anglers, had a chance. You know what I mean to to try mm-hmm. to make that. So I think it's really great that they're doing it. Um, this way as well so like some of these guys just can't travel all over the place and fish in any right. events you know so um or you know they have a bad event and uh you know can make it make it happen through their club stuff so and, and that's what i'm hoping here in virginia there's you don't see much in virginia with i know tennessee uh which is what steve owens and him are doing right don't does he run that uh the tennessee one um yes yeah they're they're their nation series over there I was hoping that we would get more involved in Virginia with it because Virginia's eat up with the whole Bass Nation stuff too, and we got a lot of different regions here in Virginia. And I was really hoping well, that 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 was going to happen. What I suggest, 
I mean, what I suggest for you is who, whoever's in Virginia, it can, it can be anyone that wants to take on that. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a chore. It's not going to be easy, but, uh, you can either, we can get you in contact with, uh, your, and it has to, it has to go through or it needs to go through the, the, the Bass Nation boat series, uh, president. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what what happens is like like Steve for instance in Tennessee he's he's gotten in touch with his uh, Bass Nation rep that uh, over the boating over the boating series and he's working in conjunction with those guys now most of those presidents will say hey we're here to help you run it how you want to run it you take care of it just let us know if you need help whatever and that's fine and that's what Steve's done and that's what most states have done I think there's 15 or 16 states now that are doing it. Uh, so it's, it's just really taking on the task, you know, yeah. uh, a person stepping up and saying, Hey, I want to run this for a year. And then you might want to, you know, pass it along to someone else the next year, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, I know, I, man, I was no, there's no way I could take on doing that, but I know there's <laughs> some guys that are, that would be really great at it and, and do well with it. And, and much as I, I talk about, I wish I had it here. You know, and that's why I need to put my big boy pants on and try it. But I've run stuff at a club level, and I'm like, man, I'm on it. You know, like it's it's time consuming. It really is. Like it's sit, like say setting the schedules up, and and people don't understand either. We're scheduling tournaments. You got to have permits. You know, and if there's big tournaments going on that weekend, they're not going to give you a permit. So you got to get right. permits for all this stuff. And I mean, it's a lot to it. And like I say, hopefully. Hopefully somebody will step up here. I was hoping, I was hoping Casey Reed, if you're listening, Casey, I was really hoping you was going to step up <laughs> and do it for us this year. But I know that he's got a crazy schedule. He's going to be fishing everything. Man, and Casey's a busy, busy, busy guy. He, he is. really is. Yeah, he's a he's a trooper, man. I give it to him, and, and he did a really great job with his tournament series, and uh, yes. I really enjoyed fishing him and fishing against him and a lot of the guys around here. But, um, but yeah, it's a lot to it, man. And, um, but like I say, what you guys do too with, with this is impressive and I don't know how y'all do it and, and check all those fish and, and, <laughs> and get, you know, well, we're, we're, uh, this year we're, we're actually implementing, uh, uh, for every 75 anglers, we're going to have a judge spe specified for every 75 anglers. So if we have, uh, you know, uh, 75 anglers, we'll probably have a, a director and a judge. And if we have, uh, 150 anglers, then we'll have a director and two judges. That's, that's what we're going to do this year. So, um, just, just to make sure that we have enough people, enough eyes, you know, on the fish, uh, as they're coming in and we can get those taken care of at the end of the day to get these anglers back, uh, back home with their families. Yeah. And, and the thing I love with y'all implement is like, say the check in and check out stuff. Um, is there anything else that y'all are looking at implementing or doing with Tony X? I mean, y'all got it good now, but is there anything else y'all looking at changing with some things with Tony X? <clears throat> Um, we are, we're actually working on some, uh, some, some deep programming right now. We're, we're changing a lot of ways. We're changing. We're going to change. One of the things we are changing is the way our uh, leaderboard is going to be shown or how it's, it, we're trying to get away from having to refresh the leaderboard. So it's going to be all pretty much automated when you log in, when you log in or go to the website to watch a leaderboard, it's going to refresh for you and take care of all that in the background. So you don't have to sit there and keep hitting refresh button to see who's in the lead. It's going to take care of it for you. That's one of the big things we're doing right now. So the past couple of months, we've been working on that. Yeah, and that's but, nice. Uh, That'll be cool. It, it takes the load off the server and, and helps helps everything run a whole lot smoother. Yeah, yeah, that's <coughs> – sorry about that. Yeah, that, that'll be nice too, like say with people watching and they have an update everything. And, yeah, I like that. So yeah. – um, but no, I mean, if everything goes well with you, are, are you going to try to fish any of these? Or you're just going to be at home running the command center. I would love to be able to fish uh, Eufaula, Lake Fork, and and Pickwick if I could. I would like to go and fish those. There's there's some Hobies I'd like to go fish, um, that I'd like to try to sneak off and go fish because those guys really throw out a, a heck of a series, man. I have to. I really have to throw out kudos to AJ and his staff and the guys at Hobie and even, you know, and a lot of the anglers, uh, they, they were some of the, you know, pioneers at some of the things that we're, we're following behind and doing, for instance, you say the board checks. Um, I don't think anybody did board checks in the beginning, except for AJ and Hobie. They were the ones that started that whole thing. They implemented it and, I, and it works so well that, uh, you know, it's, if something works, why, you, why, why change it? Yeah. And I think, um, uh, um, a lot of us are just 
said, you know, even Bass, we had this big discussion about it and said, let's just do that because it seems to be working for them. Uh, so now we have these board checks and, and license checks. And I think that it's, we're not trying to pry to say, you know, do you have it or do you not have your license? We, we just want to make sure we're all on the, you know, we're all legal. If yeah. That makes sense. You know? Yeah. Um, so. Well, it gives back to the community as well. When that area, you're coming down there to fish their lake. You know what I mean? Like, so that money goes towards the, the DNR down there or, or you know, to help with projects around. I know like Lake Chickamauga, that's the first time I've been to a lake that had that many boat ramps. I mean, Bugs Island has a lot of boat ramps, but Chickamauga has so many boat ramps. Some of them are better than others, but you can tell that that lake down there, them guys really take care of their anglers. You know what I mean? Like they, they really take care and have places to put in at, and all that comes from, you know, fishing license and all that. And like you said, just to making sure everybody's legal and, and doing what they should do. And, and, and especially like I say with the board checks, it, it's just, I think it's a great idea. And he did a good and bass and hope and all of them do a good job with that. It, so it really is. And make sure you got something to leash that board. Make sure you got a secondary board back up. Good grief. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, luckily catch, they came out with that other board now that, that it's a lighter board and, but still, you know what I mean? Things happen. They break, they fall off overboard. I I, I don't know, you man, know, yeah. anything can happen. So, um, but yeah, yep, yep. but yeah, I mean, man, I, I really, like I said, I really appreciate you guys and what y'all do. Um, did you have anything else that you wanted to cover for the scheduling, um, or, or like to bring up for the Bassmaster series this year or the Hobie series? Cause I know y'all, y'all are doing all that as well. No, I just, uh, you know, I want to throw out there the, the appreciation uh, from inside me that I wanted to, uh, I appreciate every angler that, that, that uses tourney X and that supports us. Um, I've, I posted out, a, I put out a post a couple of days ago that I was going to um, not back away from Facebook, but I am going to start weaning away from it. I'm still, you know, if you need me, I'll, I'll still check messages and texts and calls and I'm here. I'm here. I'm going to answer my phone. That's yeah. what I do. But to be quite honest with you, and I'm not going to bring up all the politics, but this negativity going on in this country, uh, yeah. in, in you know, whichever way it is, it is. But it's just a lot of negativity going on, and we need a little more positive vibes, to be quite honest with you. And that's not that's not being wrong or right or whatever, but um, with these blood clots that I got and things that are – I had blood clots. Basically, I found two blood clots. I had one in my arm, one in my leg. And uh, I'm going to tell you what. It's serious stuff. Yeah. It really is. It scared the crap out of me. And, um, you don't know if you got them or not either. I mean, no one knows if you got blood clots. Mm -hmm. It it's, uh, they just happen to find them. Uh, I'm on some type of medicine now to help try to alleviate that issue. And, uh, to be caught honest with you, uh, the stress and, uh, reading some of the posts and what's going on in this world, it's just, you know, puts you right up here. Yeah. So, um, I think that we all need to step back, take a, take a couple of deep breaths um, before we make any um, um, judgmental post or post or whatever, whatever it may be. And just, you know, just be, be thankful for what we have, you know? Exactly. So, right. And you know, that's what I was trying to, to hint at the beginning of this show was talking about everything going with COVID and, and, and let's hoping everybody could spend time with family. Cause that's what we need. You know, everybody needed, everybody was so pushed away from family and couldn't, you know, you're scared to go see your parents. You're scared to go see your grandparents with COVID and still are, you still gotta be careful. It's cause it's, it's firing back up here again, but you know, that's what I was trying to push. And then like, say you go on there and, and everybody's all happy, go lucky around Christmas time. And then everything hits. And then all of a sudden it's back, it's fired back up again, you know? And I've right. seen comments that, that how people talk to friends and I'm like, man, you know why in the world? And I ain't going to go deep into this at all, but I, I'm like you, I've kind of pushed, I've pushed it back from Facebook. I'll do our business stuff. Yep. And but other than that, I don't open it up now. So I'm posting something like I did something with my family, and that's it. Like I, I try not to go looking for it. You know, I just leave it alone. Yeah. So yeah, but, because it can really, man, it can, it can it can draw you in. I mean, some of the negativity will draw you in because you really want to you really want to you know just blurt out what you feel what you feel. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's better to just um, you know, if you got nothing to say, you know, if anything, you know, the way the old saying is, but but if you have nothing as nice to say, then just don't say anything. Yeah. So I just, I, you know, um, 
And that's just me, guys. That's just me. Yeah. So. And it can put you in a bad uh, mood. Like it, it can, it can, if you let it, it can ruin your day. It really can. And time is short. Days are short. You know what I mean? Like, so it ain't no sense in it. It really uh, ain't. We've lost, lost a lot of good friends this year um, to some sickness or another, you know, and mm-hmm. um, uh, Ben Spangler, for one, the guy, the guy was a super, super nice guy. He always would call me, always would text me, even though we were 600 miles apart. You know, we were always almost like best friends. But, you know, you just don't know how much time you have. And uh, I think that um, we just need to take a, take a step back and take a deep breath. Exactly right, man. That's, that's well-spoken and – uh, like I say, I, I, I'm not trying to rush you off, Dwayne. I, I know we're getting late Mm-mm. and covered everything with uh, the Bass Series, and I really appreciate you taking the time and coming on just talking about it, you know, and, and, and things that y'all have done and, and what y'all are improving on. And uh, I really appreciate it. And I always have a good time talking with you. Um, but If like, you have any questions, if you have, just real quick, if you have any questions, you can, you can message me. You can email me, text me, whatever. That's fine. Uh, questions about the rules are all out on the, on the Bassmaster website. We're going to do just like we did last year. We're going to, um, uh, you still sign up on Bassmasters for your yearly membership. You got 24 hours for that to pass through. Then you can sign up for your sign up for the tournament and pay. They'll send me the list of anglers and I'll, I'll, we will put them on our tourney X on the tourney X website. Okay. So just give us some time to get that done. Uh, it'll be the same scenario we had last year. Uh, rules did not change a whole lot this year. Uh, they are posted on, uh, Bassmasters website under the kayak tab, and uh, and I'll have them posted on each tourney ter- tournament page once we get them built. So any questions, any questions, y'all just give me a shout. We're here to here to help you guys out any way we can. Okay. All right, man, Dwayne, I really appreciate it. And like I say, appreciate all you do, man, and wearing all them hats and and making sure that us this kayak community can keep rolling on with a, a good platform. So we really do appreciate it, Dwayne. Thank you so much. Appreciate the invitation tonight. Yeah, you have a good one, man, and I uh, hope you have a speedy recovery and uh, we'll keep you in our prayers, man, to, 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 to get healthy quick. Thank you, sir. All right, man. You have a good one. All right. Bye. Bye. All right, guys. I appreciate y'all staying with us on that. Uh, Chris, do we have any questions coming? I meant to ask no, that. everybody's just talking and whatnot. Just chit-chatting and all that. So, um, But, you know... Like I say, not trying to st- touch back on it with the politics and all that, because I'm not. I'm not going to get into politics. I don't do it. Um, but like I say, um, one day at a time, one breath at a time, guys. I mean, if we could just post more fishing pictures. That's all I'm saying. You know, Chris, or, what, what do you think? Just more fishing pictures, more just getting outdoor pictures. Or get on iRacing and just yeah, go on get all your anger out. You know what I mean? And wreck each other. Yeah. No, me and Chris been playing I race for the last couple couple weeks there, man. And you get on there, you'll get some of it too, man. Some of you guys take that stuff so hardcore, uh, but it's fun. But anyways, kind of getting back on the topic here. <laughs> um, but anyways, um, what what I wanted to get at, and and since Dwayne and them, you know, he touched base. He he's not <clears throat> he's not the guy that schedules everything, and and I do give Bass. All the uh, uh, what, what was the word I was just going to say? And I, and I, credit. Yeah, I give Bass all the credit, but it was another word I want to use. But anyways, I give Bass all the credit for doing what they do and stepping in and, and making this where we can go on to biggest stage in Bassmasters and be able to weigh at a, at a kayak championship, you know, um, and, and to give us that opportunity to do that because a lot of us always wanted to make the bat. Me and James wanted to make the Bassmasters Classic. But we never really had the opportunity or, you know, I think, you know, I always say when we fish bass for terms, we held our own. But there was guys that are really good sticks and deserve to be there. And, and you know, like Jeff Luger and all them guys around here we fished against, them guys were just good and they did it all the time. And so it was so hard to be able to compete with them and, and make your way through the Federation into that. And then having the money to go fish the Opens was tough too so to be able to have the opportunity to fish the kayak stuff qualify and go and and go on to the biggest stage in bass masters and fishing and walk across that stage and and thank your family and friends for supporting you and get there man it's just awesome will awesome. bass refund memberships uh it depends now if no i don't think they'll refund right, your Chris membership wondering 
Yeah, and I don't know if they'll. No, I mean, if you just signed up and was like, "Oh man, I I can't do it. Can I refund it?" Maybe so. But like, if you joined and you've been on with them for a couple months, no, I don't think they're gonna. Now on tournament entry fees, no. No, I, I think they will. Uh, if something comes up before the event, so you know you got to pre-register and you do all that, and then something comes up, maybe. But I don't want to guarantee and say anything about that. So, uh, but what are, I want to know everybody's thoughts here, uh, Chris. Let's get the 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 schedule pulled back up if we can. I don't all know right. if you got to build that back up there because no. <clears throat> we're going to start talking about the KBF and the Hobie series. Um, but what I was getting at, and he, he is right. They did add another event to it. But I just wanted to see, <clears throat> and this is my opinion. This ain't me fussing about bass. This ain't me um, saying I want more, I want more, wah, wah, wah. I'm just saying, you know, when you pull the Hobie, you pull the KBF, which they've been around for a while. They've been doing that series and, and had time to set up these events, and, and which, I mean, I know Bass did too, but they're, this is their second year, so we're still building. We're still building a foundation right now with bass and and all that, but you look at the events and then you and then you're like, oh man, because that's what we was waiting on. We were waiting on the bass schedule because that's that was our intention was just to fish all the bass stuff this year, and I, I was really hoping it was going to be kind of like a points thing, you know. And does the points thing matter? Not really, because most of the time they, well, all the time they take a percentage from the event to go to the championship. But this is what this is what I was hoping was gonna change this year for for bass. Um, I was really hoping, and I wanted to see it where you had where the the championship was a smaller group, like bass, the, like the classic. I, I I wanted to see, I wanted to see like the top. Let's say maybe not even fifth. Let's just say the top seventy five. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that way, you qualify through points. But also, if you won an event, say you won an event, that was automatic qualification. But then, then you fish for points, you know. And, and if say you got, let's just say you got ten events, they take your best, I don't know, five or your best six or something like that. I, I you know what I mean, like, and do it that way. So if you can't fish a couple events, you're still in it, you know. But but they also had like a championship kind of deal. You know, you got the classic or or their championship, but where it was kind of like I, I don't know. I'm trying to think of how I wanted to do it, but you know, like you got all these guys. Then you have all the ones that qualified. They're already in, and then they have kind of like a wild card event where the guys that didn't get in go and fish, and maybe they take the top three out of that or something. I don't know. You know, just something. You're getting the top guys that are consistent. When you got 250 people into it, I feel like we're kind of getting back to KBF stuff and not knocking KBF. I, they have their trail championship, yeah. and I think that is the championship. When they do the KBF national championship, when you got 700 or 800 and some people going, yeah, don't get me wrong. It's tough to win it. I ain't going to say, oh, anybody can go in and win it. Anybody could go in and win it, but – but what I'm getting at is like you got so many people. I mean, one person fishes one event and qualifies for the year. Say they fish a, a club event and, and they take three people that placed in the top three or something, and they qualify for the national championship. You know, to me, I'm like, okay, you got 750 people. This guy fished one event all year long, and now he's fishing a national championship. I just nothing to people that I have done that because I know people's schedules tough and and all that. But I think you have just like what they call a a, a fishing derby or I don't know what you call it. It's not the national championship. It needs to be yeah. called something else. But you say we got a question, Chris? Yeah, uh, Dave Williams says uh, he's been talking with Bob and he wants to have a season kickoff event at Bob's Up the Creek in Manita in March. Date to be determined. Would love to get one objective and RBT there for a day. You talk kayaks, rigging, fishing techniques, baits and such. Well, David, let me know what you think. I think that's an awesome idea. We were looking for some things to do this year because a lot of the shows are shut down. I mean, the Richmond Expo shut down. Yeah. The Fishersville show shut down. Uh, we talked to Bob on a regular basis. I haven't talked to him in the last, I don't know, a couple of days. Well, just for some order stuff. But I would love to do that. I think it would be great to, to get up there and talk rigging and fishing. And 
um, and all that. So yeah, I, I'd be down, David. If, if y'all can work it out and hope and pray that we ain't shut down, uh, that our crazy governor does anything, but, um, that we ain't shut down, you know, hopefully, hopefully we can make it happen. Cause I would love, I think it, Chris, it would be fun just to do a podcast show out of there or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just do a, that's what we want to do for the Fishersville one, but I don't think we'd have had time at all with that one. Hmm. But if y'all haven't had a chance, make sure you go check out Bob's at the Creek Outfitters. He doesn't sponsor our show, but I'm going to tell you what, he's been a big help to our show. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's he's done a lot for us. Uh, he was a sponsor a, year, a while back, and then we kind of did our separate thing. And uh, But Bob has always been there to help us out and promote us. So uh, we love Bob and love all he's done for us. So, um, but, but anyways, I'm kind of looking at the Bassmasters um, – tournament schedule there i'm I liking put it back up vegas wanted to see it so i put it back up for him yeah yeah I, I like what i see there i'm really excited about the september 24th 5th event um i wished i don't know i don't know if we're gonna fish it me and james was kind of talking about i think we were gonna we, were gonna, we had our hearts set on the fish and everything bass masters this year and i just don't know i don't know what we're gonna do but i i know we're gonna fish a couple of them and I'm really planning on the September one, and I'm really planning on August seventh, the Upper Chesapeake Bay. I know we're not probably going to make Texas because I, I just see it going south from there. Um, we were also contemplating fishing the KBF event, which is in Florida at the end of this month, but I just don't think we'll have time with everything going on business. We're kind of doing some some changing around some things, and uh, I just don't see us being able to fish that. And so I don't know. I don't know. How are we going to see? But can we pull up? Can we go to... All right, what do we got? We got the KBF series here. I got to I got to pull it up on my phone. That is really hard to see. It's a lot of tournaments. Yeah. And it, and you know what, though? Not everybody can fish them all, but it gives everybody a chance to fish yeah. several events. Um, let me pull this up on my phone here so I can look at it because I can't see it that far away. But um, starting out in Florida and then going up to Lake Murray... I just think that is is a is pretty awesome. The only thing that I see here that could be tough for people that guys that fish professionally and do this KB do the kayak thing as a as a professional series. Hey man, that's awesome. But I, you know, for guys that are <laughs> for guys that are working, man, you better have a lot of vacation time. I mean, because you're you're I'm looking not going to fishing that one in Florida coming up in January. At least, well, at least it's warm down there. Let's load up. Let's do it. It's warm down there. Yeah. Well, you know what, though? I'm going to tell you something about Florida. Every time a tournament comes in, cold front comes in. And a cold front in Florida is different than, like, a cold front here. Like, you got one in California, too. Yeah. Yeah, hey, well, see, that's what we was looking at. You know, I was looking at stuff like that. Like, you know, they give them guys a chance over there to fish something, you know? Yeah. Um. But what I was uh, kind of getting back to bass, I'm kind of getting off subject here too, but kind of getting back to bass is what I was hoping was they going to do that championship, but I was hoping they were going to do a split. So you have West Coast and East Coast. So some of these guys, they might have to travel out a little further for some of them tournaments, but they have their thing and then we have our thing and then you take their top 25 and or 35 or how you want to do it and they take our top 25 and 35. You know what I mean? And yeah. then you have like a big, that's a national championship. That's a that's a tournament right there, and you have a two or three day event. Um, the only other thing that I wish Bass would have done this year was went to a two day event. I like two day events. Yeah. I think because if you have a bad day, not unless you have a teetotally crap day, but if you have a bad day, you got a chance to kind of redeem yourself. I wonder why I chose to do the championship on Wednesday and Thursday. What is that on the? kbf yeah i don't know well you know what i'm wondering if it's because it's such a long drive for everybody yeah, everybody can so take a week went, off they wouldn't go home friday and saturday or yeah because if you do a saturday tournament and then they well, see i think they're going to do their awards thing probably the following day maybe oh, okay that makes sense yes it'd be friday so everybody can drive back home saturday and sunday because that's a heck of a drive man yeah um that is a good thing though like on the bass event in texas is if you go down and fish Saturday, you leave there, you can start driving back and then finish up your drive on Sunday, you know. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it's let's kind of let's work on over here to the Hobie series. 
I'm um, just kind of looking around, looking at their events. The fish Watts Bar Lake. We were right there at it, man. We was in Tennessee. I know a couple guys that fish here. But you know what? I mean, you look on here, because I'm just now really looking at the schedules. I was waiting until Bass came out with theirs before we really started looking. I mean, you got Oklahoma. Uh, you got Arkansas. There's Texas. But you don't have nothing out in the West Coast either. Yeah, Oklahoma, about it. Yeah, so... You know, maybe there's something to it, too, that, I mean, KBF did it. They have one event, you know. But maybe with all the shut that shutdowns, how strict California is right now, maybe they didn't even want to jump into it, you know. I mean, California's pretty strict right now on their shutdowns, which, I mean, it, you know, it could happen, happen here. But if you look at California's event, it's a three-day event. So... It's Friday. Yeah, it was like a week to drive out there, or like three days or so to drive out there. <laughs> yeah. That's what me and James like. We was like, man, we'd love to fish at, but we'd have to line it up to if we could just use somebody's boat That's out there. That's like driving nonstop. Yeah. Sl- slip seating. What I like to do, what I, I mean, we were talking about it, because we was like, if we are going to f- compete for the KBF stuff, what we were talking about, man, if we could line up a boat out there, and both of us have a boat, and we just fly out our, ship our tackle out. Yeah. And then fly out with our rods and then, you know, redo it to come back, you know. But I mean, good gosh, Armani, you know how much money you're going to spend just to get out there yeah. with shipping? And then if something happens to shipping, you. Oh, God, I'd lose my mind. You'd have to ship like a small bag, like that little Plano bag. You just have to put stuff in that and just ship it out. Yeah. If you lose it, it ain't like you lost incredibly a lot, but it, it would still suck either way. But, hmm. But yeah, I mean, I want. What is everybody saying? What What are you guys looking at fishing this year? Do you look at a schedule and you're just like, all right, I'm going to fish one or two of the Hobie. I'm going to fish one or two or three of the KBF and one or two of the Bass. Or do you try to like when you set your schedule up? Do you try to set something up like, man, I'm going to compete in this whole series right here to try to win and and do good in points. Some guys can fish both and and. They just have the opportunity to fish both. I didn't know Supercross was still a thing. What is that? Chris Cable says we even lost Supercross. Oh, the dirt bike series? Yeah. Really? I didn't even know they still had a oh, yeah. dirt bike series. Yeah. I watch that on TV sometimes. <laughs> okay. Um I wonder why I guess I guess with all the shutdown stuff. Because mm-hmm. NASCAR is not going to California, are they, this year? Uh no, because they're changing. They're they're turning the uh, Auto Club Speedway into a short track. Oh yeah, they're turning it into a mile track. It's just like two miles now. They're turning it into a mile track. So so they won't be there. They have to tear this it year. Down so right what now. about Sears Point? They quit going to Sears they Point. They didn't go there this year. Well, because well, everything was COVID. Year. Yeah. Well, they mean they stayed right there's here on the East Coast. Two tracks they go to. Yeah. So I mean, they knocked them out. So I mean, that's why they're going to Road America. This year, so they can have a road course. Yeah, but this is a, this is a they're bass going fishing. to Houston too, or Austin, or wherever that tracks at Road Circuit of the Americas. Oh yeah, yeah. I think yeah. that's what I think they're going to that one. Yeah, they got more road courses on there this yeah. year. So, so maybe it's a California thing. Maybe they just nobody's wanting to do nothing out there right yeah, now because of the shutdown and craziness and and all that stuff. So, um, Casey Starr says one Hobie on Watts Bar, one for KBF, and he's fishing two different clubs. So you're pro- he's probably more worried about the club point stuff than the big stuff. So he's not really chasing the point stuff on the big stuff. He's more worried about it on his club stuff. Yeah, I don't know. That's what, I mean, that's where I'm kind of thinking. Like if, if Casey was doing the club stuff this year, cause I don't think he's doing it this year. Um, it's that's Casey Starnes, not Casey Reed. Oh, I know. Yeah. I'm oh, just okay. talking about Casey Reed. Casey, oh. Casey Reed ain't from what I heard, ain't doing his tournament series this year. Oh, okay. So if, if he was doing that and, you know, only had like, you know, with Bass not doing points and I don't know about the KBF. I mean, they are fish Potomac. I would like to fish that. Um, I didn't, I didn't go over that too well. I would like to fish the, um, John's picking the circuit that has the most within a reasonable drive from home. And then the bass at the Chesapeake. Yes. I yeah. I want to do Chesapeake and I want to do the Potomac. Me and James Tracy Starnes is TVKA and Watts bar kayak anglers. Okay. Yeah, the, the Tennessee, man, Tennessee does it right when it comes to their clubs, I, I feel like. 
they got a heck of a club series over there with a lot of guys that fish them. Yeah. I mean, we, you know, Casey had a good series. When me and James fished those two years, we had a good time with a lot of them guys that we fished. It was some really great guys. And there were some people that was new to it, but were great guys. You yeah. know what I mean? Or, or, and it was just fun events. But, um, we just don't even know what we want to fish this year. I mean, wants to know what is your take on regional tournaments like the one that's held on the New River or Central Virginia one that was launched last season. What do you mean, like regional ones? Like just like just I guess regional series. I don't know. Yo, I like regional series. I like a series that travels. Like Casey's traveled pretty good. You know they they went and fished out there near James and them down in Suffolk. They uh, we went to Shenandoah. Fish the James River. We fish Smith. We fish, we traveled everywhere. We fished all kinds of different bodies of water, yeah. and I like that. You know that that that's fun. Um, but yeah, I, I I don't know. I think these. I think the clubs. I think this is what we got onto this a while back. I don't want to. I don't want to stress on this too much more. But I would like to get some more input from you guys. Is there's too many daggone skin tournament series right now. You know what I mean? I have a quick question. Casey Starnes, how is the fishing on the Little Pigeon River? Little Pigeon River? It's in Pigeon Forge. Oh, okay. I cross that river every time we go down there. I've always wondered how the fishing is on it. I wonder if that's like a trout fishing river, because ain't that all I don't know. Mountains? I don't know. Is it real wide? It gets wide in spots, but I don't know if it gets real deep or not. Yeah. I've Take always wondered, because I go down there a lot. So I Does always... it look like good yakking river? Yeah. But I've never seen anybody down there. That's just why I was wondering. At least in the areas where I cross it, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I want to. I want to float to Otter this year. You, I'm gonna tell you what, man. We need to get little bitty kayaks. You don't need the big. It's awesome fishing. We said it's awesome. Yeah. Is that like trout fishing or is it smallmouth or? Honestly, I bet you it's it would probably, probably got smallmouth in it. I bet you it's probably killer smallmouth river. Yeah. It's wide. Yeah. I mean, some parts it gets pretty almost wider than the James where we fish. Oh really? Oh, I'm they're sure smallmouth in a little pigeon near Knoxville, and very good yakking. Huh? Yeah, we need because that, that Uncle Limbs is right next to the river. I don't know if they, I think they have like a little launch there or something like that. For yeah, some. that's the one with the kayak and the bona fide. Yeah, top of the truck, right? they don't have them. Never have them in the store. Did they even have much kayak and stuff inside the Not store? Not anymore. Yeah, I remember you were saying something about last time. They didn't have. Yeah. They didn't have much black packs or nothing like they didn't that. They have nothing this time. Yeah, that's crazy, Just man. Clothes and stuff. Which I know the kayaking industry is kind of tough right now with getting a lot of product. Um, so uh, I do want to update everybody. We're going to kind of change. We're going to try to uh, change gears here, go to a different direction. We're going to get into some kayak rigging. First off, I want to tell everybody because we get a lot of emails about this in the last two or three weeks um, with Motor Guide. We are going to, um, we are a Motor Guide dealer. We've been in talks with them. We're trying to get some stuff ordered. Just getting the pinpoint ones are very difficult to get right now. Um, especially with some guys that, you know, become dealers before us. They got their orders in first. So we're going to be getting our orders in. And we might, I don't know yet, we're talking about accepting pre-orders. But I can't guarantee nothing right yet, you know. So once we get our order in and we can kind of get a confirmation on what about. Because once we put our order in, we're they're telling us at least three weeks. Yeah. Craig wants you to take him to the New River. The New River. This summer when he comes up, yeah. Yeah. I, I tell you what, Craig. I don't know the New River that good, but I'd love to take to the James River. Yeah. We got an awesome spot for the James River. Yeah. Last year it sucked. But, well, no, I mean, it wasn't bad. You didn't catch no de- – well, you had a decent one up here yeah. at the Bedford Power Plant, but it got off. Yeah. Yeah, it was we like, saw it. Yeah, it was we a good saw one. It for a little, little bit there. Yeah, but. won some tournaments in that spot right there. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I, I I'm not the best on the New River. I can tell you that right now. I have fished two tournaments out of the New River. Guess how I did at them? <laughs> like that. Yeah, I mean, it was bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I've caught fish, but not done well there. Um, Jody Queen is the man, or uh, Timmy Dixon is the man. That you need to get with for the new river, which Bonafide is going to be doing their team thing on the new river this year. They're having a big meetup uh, for the team stuff. I need to talk and see if maybe we can get you uh, up there. Where is this at? Uh, it's going to be on the new river. And ja- Rad- Radford side or Timmy Dixon side? Timmy Dixon. Okay. He's so going to be the host. Yeah. He's okay. going to be the host of it. All right. Um, I don't want to put out the dates or nothing like that because it's mainly for the team. You know what I mean? Like they put it out for the team yeah. stuff. But it's got a good store. I like his store. 
Yeah, yeah, New River Outfitters. He yeah. he does. He's got good uh, good float service and and all that. I like Timmy. Timmy's a really good guy. He's he's a really great guy. Good people. Um, but <clears throat> we are going to be a dealer. We are a dealer of motor guide. We're working on. You can see that we already got some plugs. Uh, we actually ain't gonna. We might carry that wood plug. We just the plug we put on there. We like. It's a little more money, but it locks. It's just a nice. It's just a nice plug that we got on our. Craig's page going. Craig's going. Yeah, yeah, sweet. Yeah, we'll probably be there. More than likely, me and James will probably be there. Um, we'll try to work it out to get to get the whole uh, one objective, one objective crew there. So, um, but like I say, it's just everything they're trying to having a hard time getting stuff. So, uh, our plan of action when we get everything is our our goal is to have a complete install kit, wiring, plug, circuit breaker, motor mount. Quick release plate and motor. That's our plan. So, um, John says he just installed his X. Is it XI or X1? XI. XI3 on his Titan from you, from y'all, from us yesterday, and it loves it. Nice. Thank you, man. Thank you. Hey, did anybody, did you watch a video that we did yet, Chris? Did you watch the last one we did yet? I don't think I got to watch that one yet. I need, need to, to watch. It. I'm telling you what, there's a spot in there. Actually, it's two spots that I just beat the teetotal crap out of my boat. One, when it comes off a trailer by accident on me. Oh, wow. And I've had people like, man, you, you unhooked everything, then you can go to pull forward. Well, actually, what I was trying to do was, is after I unhooked everything, I looked at the boat, and I was like, eh, looks like your trailer needs to come over a little bit more. I could come off a ramp on this side. So I go to pull forward a little bit to back up. And as soon as I hit to go pull forward, it just was magical. She hit the ground? That thing went flying. You see it, boom, and then just slides down and <laughs> Wow. I'm trying to run out and hit the power pole button real quick to make it. I mean, it was a ruckus, but it's at the very beginning there. And then I'm going back to this uh, creek, and I didn't realize because I'm watching everything. It's deep on the right hand side, and I'm and I'm way off the bank onto the left hand side, and I'm just looking, you know, and I'm like looking for grass and just kind of in my own little world. And all of a sudden, I look down and I see a big boulder go by, and I'm like, oh crap! And before I I could get the button off good man that thing's just, <laughs> i mean you watch it bow up I and mean, it stopped me <laughs> i mean a dead stop but i will tell you what i tested that mount that week while we were down there it was crazy where was this at again down at chickamauga uh-huh. when we was down there because they drained that lake i mean i that spot it's still shallow they ain't got no shoal marker right there or nothing they on drain that. it for the winter yeah like it's it doing, it, like it do in tennessee yeah it's it's a well that's where it's at it's in tennessee Lake oh, I thought, I thought you were about Chickahominy. No. Oh, no, no, Long no. Lake. Yeah. Long lake, yeah. People do that easy because they call it the Chick. Yeah. And that's what everybody calls it here, too. Yeah, they drain those lakes down there for yeah. flood, flood control. But you, you think they would have some kind of, like, shoal marker on that? Because if you come, which, where I was at, you shouldn't be ripping on a bass boat anyways. No. But I watch people fishing off a bank over there, and I'm like, what are y'all fishing for? You're fishing in, like, a foot of water now. You know, like, I realize it. Yeah. It's so shallow. But... Anyways, uh, kind of getting into some of the rigging stuff. I wanted to just talk about batteries real quick while we still got people on here. Uh, do we got any more questions about anything before I go any further, Chris, or any comments? Casey Starnes wants to talk about the kayak cushion. The kayak cushion. Okay. Yeah, we can get into that. Let me talk about this first. We can get into the kayak cushion and then uh, go from there. So I get we get a lot of questions when it comes to what size battery should I run with a 30 amp, I mean, a 30 pound thrust Minn Kota Endura C2. Me and James run 50 amp hour Bainos. And I'm talking, Chris, you know, when, when we run, it's it's three miles up the river we went fishing at. Yeah. And I pulled you a lot of it because it it's a long paddle in the current going yeah. upstream. Oh, so yeah. I pulled you and I ran it all the way up there. Not a problem. Fished. If I needed to use it when I come back down, I could use it. And uh, but got a, got a good use out of it, and, and but that worked perfect for that. But one day I went to go plug it in, and I was trying to use it on my XI three. The problem with the XI three, it's a brushless motor, and the amp draw is not as hard like it would be like with. I mean, you're still pulling a lot of amps, but like if you had a regular fifty five Minn Kota. And then a 55 motor guide brushless, the amp draw is not as hard as that. You know what I mean? Yeah. What people don't understand is they look at the amp hours 
and you're like, oh man, you can use it all day. I got a PMW or whatever. It, don't get me wrong, those work. But when you still jack that dude up, you're still pulling the hard amps. You know what I mean? Like if you're making a long run, you're still pulling those those amps. People's like, well, you just can't you can't make a lot of long runs. You got to back it down. You can't run a long period of time at this speed and this and that. I don't want to do that when I'm fishing. I want to put that dude on wide open. I want to shoot across over there and I want to fish. Or I want to go out and go up the cove or up the lake and fish this cove. So when it comes to that and talking with Bino and all that, those motherboards on those batteries can only su support a certain amount of amp draw. So you got a 50 amp battery. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't want to throw the numbers out there because I don't want to be like people saying something, but you got to be careful because if you're running too small of a, a lithium with too big of a motor, the amp draw is going to burn up the motherboard. It's going to get too hot, yeah. and it's going to burn up the motherboard, and you got a pretty much a useless piece of plastic box sitting right there. It's, you know, it's just useless. So I don't care what battery you run or what brand you run. If you run too small... With too big of a motor, I don't care if you can run it all day long. But I'm going to tell you right now, you're gonna you're you're killing the life of your battery if you're doing that. We run an 80 amp, and I'm telling you, what we was done a chicken maca man. The runs that we made on those batteries, wide open, from the end of a creek to the mouth and up the lake and fishing and running wide open. And then when you're done, you come you run wide back to the boat ramp, and still had power. Um, you know, but I see guys, oh, man, I run a 55 uh, XI3 with a 50-amp battery and run all day. I won't tell you what. It might. Not saying it won't. But give it time. It's not going to last as long as if you would have had a bigger one to where, you, you know. And, yeah, don't get me wrong. Dakota and all them, they got, what I don't know, what it was like, 12-year warranty on them things? I mean, Sounds it's like a, it, yeah, yeah, it's crazy it's long warranty, and that's great. But, I mean, if you keep burning them up every year, they're going to eventually ask you, hey, man, what are you doing? Yeah. You know? Chris runs 100 amp power. Yeah. I, I, If you're running anything with, like, I always tell people, if you run, let's say, so a 30, we tell people 50 to 60. Don't go no lower than 50. If you're running a 45 to 55, I say a 45, you can go to a 65 to 80. But you get on up above that, you need to have an 80 to 100, 100 amp battery. I mean, it's expensive. But it is no sense in having to burn, keep burning them dudes up. Oh, you know man. what I mean? I mean, by you know, when we talked to him, what we we're doing, he's like, nah, "We're gonna hook you up, guys. We're, you can get some 80s." And and they took care of us on that. By you know, was a heck. That, their customer support's on point. I yeah. love them. Great company to work with. Um, and like I say, I'll have some links to the bottom here, especially if you're on YouTube and all that. And you can see Chris put the, Chris tagged them in this video, uh, so you can see all the tags. Yeah, click on the, the tag. Up yeah. There in the, and it'll take you to buy, you know, but you can go to oneobjectivebf.com. We're a dealer for them. Back their product 100%. I have, we have not had any issues that are like, man, this thing just keeps failing and, and dying on me and, you know, and not having uh, some customer support or anything like that. They, we've hardly had any issues with, with them. And if it was, it was something that, you know, like we did, we were running too big of a motor on too small of a battery. So, um, like I say, great company, great company to work with. Um, but yeah, when I mean when it comes to that, that that's and you know these guys that are rig, uh, wiring up these, the, I think I think that's what you call it, a PWM or PMW. Guys, correct me if I'm wrong, and I, I can't remember what they, what they call it. But people ask us if we're going to make one, and no, we're not. We're just going to go with our basic setup. It, it's worked perfect for us. Um, if we had to go into that and wiring up one of those and the extra wiring and the cost, and it w it would be astronomical for a box. You know, yeah. people could build it a whole lot cheaper than what it's going to cost to build all that stuff. And, oh, yeah. and and when we build it, we're not going to want to go on Amazon and just buy a regular cheapo PMW or PWM, whatever it is, and, and then have it fail, you know. So we're going to want to spend the money and get the best one you can get for what you need. So, and we just looked at it and we're like, man, the, the money's just going to be astronomical with it. So what's it say? PWM, that's what it's called? Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think it's great. If you want to, you know, very uh, control the, the speed of your motor and dial in in a little bit more, I think it's perfect. I'm not telling people not to run it. I'm just telling you, I don't care if you got one of those. 
if you're running too small of a battery with too big of a motor, your battery is not going to last you long. If you're running a lead acid, it's a little bit different because they can drain down. But those them 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 lithiums get to a certain point and they're done. They stop. And if you're running a long period of time or, or get caught up where you got to run a long period of time, you can burn it up quick. And then you're just out of a lot of money. So, um, but that's just something I just wanted to cover. It's not a big topic. It's it's not a, a lot of uh, science to it, I guess. But just people always ask me, do you think, man, I'm only running 30 minutes at this one spot. What size? You? And then I'm paddling the rest. I always tell people, buy bigger than what you think you're going to need. Yeah, it's always better to have more than enough than not enough. Yeah, because what's going to happen is you're going to realize you're going to use that more than you yeah. thought you were. Especially Chris, Chris Cabral has a 30 amp hour for his finder and lights. And that's perfect. That I mean, that I, I know a lot of guys that were running the, the um, oh man, it just slipped my mind. Yak Attack, Yak Attack deals them, uh, they're a little battery pack. What is that one so called? What? Nakwa, Nakwa. The Nakwa, yeah. And that's a 10 amp. I mean, guys are running them. their grass for, what do you run? Do you run a Nakwa for yours? No, I run one of those little Duracell emergency light batteries or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go in exit signs or whatever yeah. or something. Yeah. This fit, it fits it down in my uh, dry pod. Yeah. And I mean, that's all you need. I mean, yeah, it, it, it runs it, you all day. Yeah. And then some. I've run it two or three times and never had to charge it. Now, I don't know what one of them would, and I'm not saying they won't. I, with When we run a live scope and that, I don't know how much of a draw it would be if you run something like that. But I run a 45, I think is what it is, for my graphs. But I'm running my power pole, my graph, and then we use it to charge our GoPros too when we're fishing. Yeah, stuff like that. So, um, so there. Yeah, it, 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 there's no fluid or nothing. So if you turn the kayak over, or whatever, it's not going to hurt it. Yeah. No. Now, if you get a lead acid, it needs. But most of your deep cycles are not. Well, they are maintenance. Some of them are maintenance. Yeah. But a lot of your newer batteries now are getting to a point where it seems like you don't see as many. A lot he of maybe want to put it on, put the lithium on his side for a room or something like that. He's, yeah. He asked if it's safe to run it on the side while it's in the kayak. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I see people lay them on the side and all yeah. that stuff in there. I mean, mine help. Mine on the front laid on the side for the longest time. It it don't it don't drip nothing out or leak nothing out. Yeah. That suck with like a lead ass or something. Do bust and all of a sudden you just paddle and heat yeah. your plastic up. Yeah, you be sinking. Yeah, that get pretty nasty pretty quick. Um. Anybody else need me to? touch base with anything when it comes to uh batteries and and all that um you know i i i want to i want to do one thing people's like is it worth buying a lithium over a lead acid yes and no I, I mean i know that's a stupid answer and it's not giving you the answer you want but you're when it comes to lithium you're paying for a little bit longer life uh you don't have the you know like a, a lead acid if they can get sulfated. The plates, you know, they grow that. What they grow the uh, calcium deposits in there, or whatever it is, yeah. and, and they short out. Bob runs a Nakwa battery on a Helix Seven down inside him, and he'll last twelve or thirteen hours on full charge. Yeah, yeah, and, that, and I mean, they're. Yeah, it's hard to beat that battery, man. That's a good battery. Yeah. It's light. It's small. But like you say, getting back to that, I mean, before I got the eighty amp. I didn't have a big enough one to run the XI three. Yeah. I was running that lead acid group thirty one or whatever. It was like a, it was a group twenty nine, I think. That dude was heavy. You know what I mean? That's a lot of weight in that boat. Oh yeah. And I we went and now I got two lithiums in the back with my tackle in that box. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, go check out the rundown of my Titan. I, we do a me and James kind of switched up with uh, our tackle boxes for our bigger boats for the tournaments and, and fish and all that this year. Um, but anyways, we run in two lithiums in there. I got two lithiums and still doesn't even weigh close to the amount of having the one lead acid in the back. So, uh, it's, it's worth its weight, shall I say, or weight. Uh, I don't, I don't know how I want to say that. This is going to sound worth stupid. Worth its now. weight in gold? Maybe, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's worth its weight in gold, but it, it, it's, you're paying for a losing weight, I guess. You oh, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So, um... And we were looking at we were looking at the amp hours from a eighty to a group twenty nine, and we were getting more hours out of it than you are a big lead acid group twenty nine. Yeah. With the eighty. Aaron wants to know can a bona fide kayaks handle big heavy lead acid batteries? 
They can. I mean, I've seen guys run them. But you got to look at it when you do this. If you you, you got to downsize all your stuff now. You got to downsize your tackle. You yeah. got to downsize. You have quite as much room in the bona fide as you do like a native or something like that. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. And you better get you, you know, a nice battery box just in case it leaks acid yeah. or anything like that. So Strap that, it down good so if you turn it over, it, ain't, yeah. it don't end up in the bottom of it. My God Almighty, you imagine trying to flip that dude back over if you oh, flipped yeah. it. You know, I mean, that'd be... Um, but, yeah, I mean, you can run it. But don't run it in the nose of the boat. I see guys starting to do that, and I'm telling you what, you are asking for trouble when you run that thing oh, in the nose. It in the front hat. Yeah, I mean, it makes yeah. that boat so much more unstable if you do something like that. So, um, if you got a stern mount, it's not as bad, but I'd put it in the back right behind your seat. Yeah. You won't plow water as bad when you do it too, hitting waves and, and all that stuff. So. Yeah, Craig says behind the seat is recommended. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's that's the way them boats are set up, man. All your weight's supposed to be centered to that boat. Centered or right behind your seat. You don't want to go too far in the back either, you know what I mean? Because then you're lifting in front of the boat up, which you're taking more boat out of the water, which in turn makes it less unstable, yeah. you know, or more unstable, should I say. Um, but but anyway, somebody want to talk about the kayak cushion, I think it was saying? Yeah, uh... We had the opportunity yeah, to... Uh, Casey Starnes wanted to talk about it. To be a dealer for him. Um, we kind of turned it down. I didn't like... He was new then. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Maybe we need to go back and revisit that uh, for 2021. At the time, he was new. And just the dealer package I had going on just didn't fit our budget and what we wanted to do. So, um, I think it looks like a great product. You know, I'd like to get one and try it out. So, is this like a seat cushion? Yeah, it's just like a... You know, like you get at, uh, I'll say like a football game. You want one of the ones to sit on the. Oh, yeah. But okay. it's better than that. I mean, it's way better than that. Uh, the material they use, and it's like a, I guess it's more like a gel yeah. material, you know. But, I mean, the guys, guys are loving them, and especially if you got like back issues and all that sitting in a kayak forever, you know, your butt gets numb. I don't, I didn't notice it much in the bona fide or the native, but when I was in that vibe, man, my, I guess when my feet were sitting out straight or my legs were sitting out straight. My legs would go to sleep. My butt would hurt. It'd take me, when I get out of that boat, it would take me freaking 30 minutes, it felt like, to get all back feeling back right there. Craig wants to talk cup caddy. Cup caddy. Yeah. Oh, man. That's a... Hey, before we get into that real quick, I want to tell Casey everyone... Casey also wants to talk cold water fishing. Cold water fishing? Yeah. We can do some cold water fishing. Yeah. What time we got? Because I don't want to go to... 918. 918? Okay. Um... Before we get into all that, because I don't think we covered this yet, so we've got a newsletter that we're going to start doing. Um, this gives everybody the opportunity, for one, to see the newest video that comes out, because we're going to post it there. Yeah. Um, now, granted, depending on when the video comes out, you'll probably see it on there first, but if you haven't, we'll have our latest video in the newsletter. We're going to have our bestseller of the week in the newsletter, and then we're going to have our top sellers you know what i mean or or new products so but the thing about that is when we come out with a new product it's going to come out in our newsletter first before it hits some hits anywhere else yeah. so everybody will have a chance to see it first before it comes out on our facebook stuff yeah. um we're also going to be doing exclusive discounts through there some days it might be 10 cent i mean 10 cent <laughs> what a deal yeah. uh sometimes <laughs> they're going to be five percent sometimes it'll be ten percent you know <laughs> um but but we're going to be doing more of our stuff through our newsletter yeah. on our sales. Now, Black Friday sales, all that will continue to be site-wide, you know. But we're going to have promo codes in there for stuff like that. Maybe we'll have promo code in there for free shipping for the weekend or something. You know what I mean? You just We don't know how we're going to do Craig it. Craig says, Cup Caddy, best new product for 2020. Thank you. You know, I've been trying like crazy to get that on Bassmasters. Like what they do all their – they got a um, – Dang, I meant to bring that down there because I wanted to cover a, a topic in there. Yeah. Might have to save it for next show. But anyways, they do like all their cup, I mean their cup caddy, all their kayak products and, and a product out there to help organize and for your kayak stuff and, and whatever. And I have been trying. So if anybody's out there that has connections with Bassmasters and, and the guy that does the articles, I would love to get that cup caddy in there. Yeah, it's a good little thing. Yeah. Yeah, and it's um. Uh, Rommel tested the new Newport vessels NK one eighties this weekend on a Bayano twenty four forty amp. It's a viable option. NK, which one is that? I don't know. Is that that? New, it, Newport vessels NK one eighties one eighty s. I wonder if that's their uh their new motor. 
this was something I wanted to talk about, and I think it's a great topic. Some of you guys listening probably already know. I'm going to see if I can find it uh, on here. Because I get to add all the time. They're pushing this thing really hard. Oh, Chris, I'm going I'm to bring it up, and I want... Here we go, right here. Now, th- Chris, I don't think Chris has seen this yet. Greg Have you says s- it's a torpedo lookalike. <laughs> what does that look like right there? It's like a torpedo with a yellow propeller. That's exactly a torpedo <laughs> with a yellow propeller. <laughs> it's crazy to me. So, I mean, the mount... And everything. I mean, man, we got called out on products that look similar to somebody else's, but we like beefed ours up or done something. And people kicked us in the head in the ground on some of this stuff. You know oh, what I yeah. mean? Like, I'm not trying to start drama no one bit with it. Because, I mean, people's got their opinions, and that's great. Um, but when we when we make a product, we try to, we try to like, we design ourselves. And then we look out there and see what's out there, you know, just yeah. make sure we're not had the same idea as someone else. 403 oh. AC yellow prop. Yeah. Yeah, it's a 403. That's yeah. what it is. I mean, it's... it's. I would be curious if you could order one of those props and see if it would bolt right up to a torpedo. Because, I mean, it looks like it would. Yeah. Now, the drawback on this, it's $799. That's great. But it doesn't come with a battery. Hmm. Now, the torpedo comes with a battery, but you're still spending... Uh, what is it, twenty one hundred dollars or something like that for the four or three, yeah. something, something so like that. So, what kind of battery do you use? That it's a twenty, one? it's a twenty four volt. Now, Bino has the twenty four volt that you can buy, yeah. and it's close to the same price as what the other ones are. I'm sure it's a little bit bigger, you know, but lighter than a lead acid. Could you imagine having to run? Now, you can run smaller batteries in lead acid to make a twenty four volt system, but holy moly! I mean, look, look here. All right, have you seen, Chris, you went out and did the test when we was testing the Torquedo. Yeah. Okay. You remember the controller? Look at that. Yeah, that's, that's, that's it's just, exactly it's just a the same. Torquedo with a yellow yeah, kill, switch. kill switch. I mean, it is just mind-blowing to me. I wish I could have had the pictures up for everybody that hasn't seen it yet. I mean, down to... If I can find one, I, got, I got one right here. Yeah, there you go. Pull, pull the Newport vessel up. And and put it up there for anybody that hasn't seen it yet. But I want everybody's opinion on this. I want to know if you're listening to iTunes right now, and you know you didn't catch us live, message us or either email us at oneobjectivebf at gmail dot com. And do you? I, I mean, I get competition. I think you know we have competition out there, and it's great. It, it's what grows the. It's what grows the industry, and it's what pushes each company to do try to do something new and better the following year, which in return is great for the consumers because they're getting great products. You know what I mean? Or hope hope that they're getting great products uh, and something new to try or something new to, to put them to the next level or whatever, you know. Um, but what do you guys think when it comes to that? I mean, do you think that's blankly just copying somebody, not being original, not trying to do something on your own design. Like, why couldn't they make the motor housing different or the bracket different? I mean, that is a blankly. Yeah, I don't know. And and I'm trying to, you know, I know some of these guys run Newport Vessel, and, and I mean, hey, man, it's hard to beat the price on their motors, and from what I hear, are really good uh, on their other motors. I haven't I not haven't had the opportunity to. But did, did we? Did somebody say they tested that motor this weekend? Yeah, Rommel said he tested it. What was what was your thoughts on it? Is it is it as quiet as the four oh three or is it um you know, is it as loud as the four oh three? Because I mean I know they talked about using like rare earth magnets in their motors that was supposedly supposed to help make it quiet. Now the eleven oh three, that's a quiet motor. Yeah. It's a crazy powerful motor too. But I want to know what was your thoughts on uh, on that motor, you know what I mean? What was it? I hate I hated knocking it, but I mean I I just look at it. And I'm like, God dang, that is the exact same everything. The controller, everything. It's hard to. It's hard to. I know they're supposed to be coming out with their own battery. From what I was reading and and people talking about it, and uh, but you know I think it needs to be competition out there for Torquedo and them. In my opinion, here it is right here. I couldn't get the picture to say right side. So did the. What'd you do? I brought it up on the screen there. Oh, oh, the sharing. You can't see it yet, but it's it's there. Yeah, 
Um, but it's just crazy to me. Yeah, there we go. There we go. There we go. There yeah. We go. I mean, that is to the T. But like I say, uh, Robert, what has he commented back? What he thought about that motor yet? Runs really well. German made, China made, both work well. So is this just quiet? I mean, is it? Because the 403 has like a loud, you can hear it. Yeah, Craig the says it's made in China. The Torquedo is German. Yeah. Yeah, the Ger- Torquedo is made in Germany for a fact. I mean, I've had a lot of conversations with Jeff Little and, and, yeah. and learning the product, you know. and um, But I was just curious, you know, like. Yeah, that's what it looks like. I just want to know if it's just as loud or if it's just as quiet or or what, you know. I don't know. I I I just hate I just hate it. We we were looking around and seeing something that was very similar to ours, but it was changed. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they made it their own. So when you look back at it, you're like, eh, you know, when you're in an industry like we're in, you're gonna have it. There's something you do about it. We were just talking about that earlier. China has a way of copying people. There's actually a Ford F one fifty in China that they don't call it a Ford F one fifty, but it looks just like a Ford F one fifty. Yeah. What we so, call it earlier, tang, 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 tang. Uh, the China, <laughs> China F-125 or something like that. I don't know. It looks just like an F-150, but they call it something else. Well, I'll tell, tell you how bad it was. When we were down there for um, the ICAST, and there's Chinese people walk around everywhere, and that's what they do. Well, didn't John Cruz have to get after? Yeah, he had to get after one brand. When we were down there. That was our first year. Taking pictures of his lures or something? We had that on video, but I, would, I wasn't going to post it, and then I didn't. But... The guy had missile baits, zoom worms, uh, booyah frogs, uh, all this stuff in there. And supposedly he was just showing what all they could mold if you needed something molded to put brand it yours. But when you smelt those missile baits, it smelt like vomit. Like <laughs> the smell was straight vomit. I ain't even smell no plastic like that, you know. But I noticed they also was down there in other companies like kayak brands measuring kayaks. Writing down measurements, yeah. so they could go back and then you look. There is some out there that looks like a bona fide RS. That's another brand. The Native is the same way. It's another company I've seen. A guy. There's one kayak company. I don't know the name of it. A guy I watch on Twitch, ordered one, and thought he was getting it made in the USA. And ended up being made in China. Huh. He was kind of disappointed when he found out it was made in China, but that he'd already ordered it and it was already shipped, so he couldn't cancel it. I can't remember the name of it. Yeah. Well, there's one, because I've said something to Big Adventures about it. I was like, man, did y'all know this was out there? It looks like a native. The propel drive looks exactly like the native. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, it might be like a little change here, but I mean, the pedal drives, everything everything looks like the native pedal drive system. Yeah. It's just crazy. And I don't understand. I mean, we as the people buying into stuff like that, too. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that, that's... I get competition. I don't mind competition. I, and I've said it again. I'm gonna say it and I'm gonna say it again and say it again. I don't mind competition. It makes us all grow, it makes us better. I just hate blankly, you know, like knockoff. Like I don't know. I, I hope that they make some changes where they make it kind of their own, but I don't know what they were thinking on the repercussions on it. And who knows? I don't know what's down the road from Torquedo and saying, Hey, <laughs> you gotta quit making this thing. I don't know. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's nuts, man. I it's just, it just kinda blew my mind, but uh, but anyway, what, what else we got? What, what the cable com- says wish, wish, yeah. You mean wish dot com? <laughs> Maybe I don't know. Do they sell a lot of knockoff stuff? Yeah, that is true. Yeah, I, I I remember seeing some ads with that. Some of the stuff they have on there. But yeah, let us know in your comment and, and like I say the the comments below or what do you think? Do you think that's okay? Do you think? And and I'm not knocking anybody who says it is. You know, it's yeah. it's. It's everybody's opinion. Yeah. But I just want to know, do you think that's okay? Or do you think that, would you, would you want to buy something from somebody that blatantly knocks something off design-wise? Or would you much rather support the company? I mean, granted, some of these companies, prices are high. And if they know that they're the only one in the business, then they can jack their prices yeah. up that high. You know what I mean? And people will buy it. Rommel says he tested all weekend. Any question you have on it, I will answer. Well, that's what I want to know. I just want to know, is it, is it quiet? Or, you know, is, is it lo- real noisy, or what did you yeah. think? Yeah, I mean, did you have you ever run the 403? I'm sure he's been around somebody that's run a 403. Yeah. And you see, it's loud. It's a, it's a... Yeah. 
I just want to know if it's, is it just as quiet or is it, if it's even louder. Yeah. You know, that that's what I want to know. Yeah. I mean, if it does the job, you know, like the computer system in it. Now that's another thing because that was built into the battery, I think, with the GPS. So we would track your speed and all that. Does yeah. that does that do that too as well? Yeah, that's what I want to know. Hmm. But does, does Bayano get the not Bayano, but uh, Torquedo? I wonder if they do they make their own parts in house or do they buy them from vendors? I don't know. I, I mean, I'm sure that some could be stuff. a thing. If they get it from a vendor, then they could just call that vendor and have them. Yeah. Order it unless they have patents on those particular parts. Supposedly, like I know there was a guy out there 3D printing boxes that looked just like the Torquedo controller box. But what he was doing was putting one of those PMW or PWMs in there, yeah, and just kind of making his own throttle box. Ronald says it's quieter than the 403. Really? Yeah. Oh man. Now see that direct drive. Oh wow. How do you go about getting something like it? Because I'd love to get something like that to do some video stuff with, yeah. like. I never heard of them until you said something about it before the show. Well, if you if you go in there and look, they got some regular, like the regular behind, you know, like stern mount motors. I yeah. mean, they're nice motors. A lot of people talk about how quiet they are. Yeah. Um, some of them look like Minn Kota, Some of them look like Motor Guide. I don't know, you know, but I don't know. I just, I was just curious, you know, like I'm glad to see that somebody's out there has tested it. You know, I've never talked yeah. to nobody trying it. Yeah. Uh, which it just came out. I mean, you going to rate it in between the four hundred three and 11, the eleven hundred three for power. Wow. So, do you think it actually has a little bit more power? What what boat was you testing it on? That's what I want. Uh, I think he put it up here. What he was running it on. Let me go back up here. Yeah, on his uh. No, he didn't say. He just tested it with a Bayano twenty four volt forty amp. Okay. I thought he said it. I thought he said what boat he put it on. I want to say. No, he didn't. If he did, if he, if let he, us know. Let us know what boat you put on. I'm curious what speed you had. I can't. If he did, I can't say it. He said the prop is a quite quite a bit smaller. Runs oh. a little higher RPM. Okay, so it's probably not getting the torque, maybe. Yeah. Like the 403 is getting, but it, you know, speed wise, it could be bigger. I don't know. You know. Casey wants to know how you get some hats or decals from one objective. Hats and decals. We got decals. You can go on oneobjectivebf.com. We do have some decals on there. Um, and also, hey, shirts. We got shirts. We got shirts. We got some shirts on there, guys. We get some more orders, and, you know, we'll, we'll order some more shirts. If you guys have colors that y'all prefer, maybe people don't like his color. I don't know. We've sold a few of them. But if y'all don't like your color, let us know. If y'all want something different, y'all want white, y'all want black. I don't I don't know what you want, you know, when it comes to We try to be kind of neutral. With yeah. the gray, you yeah. know, but um, we are we are talking about some hats. Hats sold pretty good for us. We were just trying something different. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we got stickers. I uh, plan on doing some black and white ones as well. Uh, besides the fluorescent green, which that's our that's our color, so that's why we kind of went with that. Um, but do plan on having some other colors up there soon. Plan on having. We got something in the works, Chris. I came here if I talked to you. If not, uh, we have. I have talked to you about it, but. I don't want to spill no beans about it at all right now. Well, we got something in the works that's going to be a little different than what we normally make. Um, we're really excited about it. I think this is going to be a lot of people are going to like it. Uh, I'm hoping that within, I want to say by April, that we'll have this product line. It'll be one objective product line, but this new product line yeah. that we're getting into. So. I'm really hoping to have have that um, by April. Just got to see how everything goes. Um, oh, it's a new canoe pursuit. New canoe pursuit. What kind of speed? Does it got speeds on there? 5.5? 5. 5. 5. Uh, speed was 5.9 to 6 miles an hour on the pursuit. 403 was 5.5 5 to 5.6. Oh, wow. I like that. Heck, yeah. That's a... I wonder what the difference in weight-wise with the battery... Now, does that... Does that controller track? I mean, I, I know he's got his speed there, but I don't know if that was off his graph or if that's off their little sp speedometer thing. Because, like, say, the Torquedo has everything built into that box, their yeah. battery box. So that's what I was curious as, as too, is how that gets tracked and, and, and all that. Yeah. So, um, but, but anyways, yeah, we're going to have some, we're going to have some new stuff coming out. Um, but other than that, I mean, testing now. What are they talking about? Teasing. 
Oh, teasing. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I, it's so far away. I couldn't tell what it's testing. Where or... do you buy kayaks and stuff in southeastern Tennessee? Uh, well, there used to be. Well, I mentioned Uncle Limbs, but like I said, they don't sell nothing no more. Well, there used to be Hook One. Hook One was some at somewhere in Tennessee. Bass Pro Shops, they don't ever have nothing. And there was a couple other. I got a list of in our notebook of dealers in Tennessee. It's several. It's actually several, and a lot of them. Of course, I only have been to Pigeon Forge and Gatlinburg. So I don't, yeah, I don't know. you'd think they would have something down that way, though. Yeah, you think it would be more options there, but I think Hook One was somewhere in that vicinity there, but they went out of business. Oh, right. which is crazy because they were such a big, big business. But I mean, yeah. the kayaking world, man, it, it just put everybody on their face when you couldn't. They couldn't even get boats out, you know. Yeah. When half the kayaks are made in North Carolina and they went down on that big shutdown earlier this year, that kind of put everybody in a bind, yeah. you know? So, um, Frontier Outdoors and Dugout Bait and Tackle. Dugout Bait, yeah. Steve Owens is big with Dugout Baits and Tackle. Yeah. They, they've gotten several good guys on their pro staff. and Yeah, check him out. They got they got a lot of good stuff going on right now. They've been doing some good promoting. Um, so, um, we're actually going to be doing, I don't know if I even should say this on here right now, because I know what's going to happen. You brought it up now. I know what's going to happen. We're actually going to be doing some more pro staff stuff. Um, getting some guys on here soon. Yeah. Um, but we're, I'm, I'm appointing. So if he's on here, I'm appointing Jason Hensley, uh, to start taking care of that, of the pro staff stuff. So myth, the man. Yeah. The legend. The legend. We need a plaque made for him. Yeah. Did you see what he gave his brother for uh, Christmas? No, I didn't. He, g- <laughs> he gave his brother a picture of himself and autographed it. <laughs> well, y'all got a CNC machine. You can just make a make him a plaque. I know. We need to. We need to make him. James one. probably listening. Probably start working on it. Yeah, get to work. Make it out of make it out of starboard. <laughs> <laughs> the man, the myth, the legend. Yeah. Yeah, he signed a picture with him pulling a bass out. <laughs> and then framed it and give it to his brother. Oh, it was so okay. funny. I put on there the man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but no, guys, I, I do appreciate you guys tuning in tonight. Um, I think we're gonna wrap it up. What time are we are? We're nine thirty here. Yeah, yeah, we're nine thirty. Uh, I don't see how I can alien all them go as long as they do. They go three and four hours on their show. Yeah. I just, yeah. I don't know. They just love chit chatting, I guess. But anyways. Uh, we're going to wrap it up tonight. Make sure you go get signed up for our uh, our newsletter if you're interested in getting some deals and uh, anytime new product come out, new videos come out, and our you know our sellers of the week, all that stuff. Um, if you if you're interested in doing that, Chris, he just got signed up tonight. Um, go on oneobjectivebf.com, scroll down, and you'll see the news uh, sign up for our newsletter. Uh, get signed up for that. Um, if you don't mind, please share this video, guys. Uh, also, check the us sound out. is off. Huh? The share sound has been turned off. I figured it oh, out. Oh, did you figure it out? Yes, yeah, so and no more loud noises Doop. and potential heart attacks for people that are listening. <laughs> um, but make sure you share this video. Also, if you're listening on iTunes, please give us a rating. Guys, y'all have been great. we got 65 ratings on there right now. I love to see that get up to about 100. I think that'd be great. It helps push our show out there a little bit more. Also, please go to our YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button to get notifications when our new videos come out. And, uh, guys, we'll talk to you later. Y'all have a great week. Um, Hoping, Chris, you're going to be out of town next weekend? Yep. Cheesecake Factory. Oh, man. So, I don't know if we'll do anything. Actually, we're going to be moving to the new studio. Green Top. Oh, yeah. You're going to have to blow some money. (laughs) Uh, But we're going to be setting up the new studio. So, this is going to be the last night in this studio, I'm hoping. Uh, we're going to have everything set up in the other studio. I, I hope everything's somewhat mediocre in there when we set it up. Um, but anyways, we're going to be in a new studio. Other than that, guys, I'll talk to you later. Y'all have a great weekend, great week. Stay safe and stay positive. Talk to you later, guys. See Bye. You.